Okay guys, this is the last part of my legendary tool deck building kit. Uh, specifically, again, this just focuses on this one variation that hopefully can give you guys some ideas. Legendary cards are fun and powerful if done correctly. So let me start off. Sneaky little cards. <laughs> the worst ley line. Or almost the worst ley line, but it works really well with Empress Empress Galena, I think. Um because you can jack anything that's not not a land. It also works well with Autumn War and Shaku, because now everything that is not a you know, not legendary like that soul ring, you can out tap for a man as well. Basically, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but anything that like um, anything that is not necessarily legendary is now legendary, and with Autumn War and Shaku, it just it's just bonkers. Um, so it also shuts down token decks pretty well. It can backfire for you trying to win off of Titania, but eh, that's only happened one time. Godsend. I felt the deck we needed more of a punch, and Godsend just says, "Bring it," because I can kill it. And it doesn't even—it just gets around Shroud and Hexproof because it doesn't target. It just says, "Yeah, you want to swing at me with that? I'll block and yeah, bye." <laughs> Chrome's Memorial is really good. Works well with Sidri because you can turn it into a Chroma itself, and it's pretty funny. Now, somebody naturalizes this after you cast it or get on the battlefield. That's really going to be heartbreaking. But the fact of flying and pro black, pro red, and haste just are amazing. Vigilance and trample work offensively and defensively along with first strike. Not necessarily needed, but it's basically the flying and the protection from black and red. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Primeval, prime, Primeval's Glorious Rebirth is legendary reanimation, and it's really good. And it's all legendary permanence for seven mana. Lands, creatures, artifacts, enchantments. Uh, oh, my word. It's just it's amazing. Even cards like Search for Azanta that flip over into legendary lands it's just amazing yeah it's just amazing um yeah so i believe every five color deck should have one reanimation if not two uh at least three creature removals but in this case deep beast within is a charm source posture it's source to uh supreme verdict and Yagmas Vile, Vile Offering, which is a Planeswalker slash Creature Reanimation, and then just straight murder something. It's really good. Um, card advantage is amazing. Search for Zanta when you turn it into it. It helps you fix your card that you're drawing, so never feel free to mill something. Um, Zanta can work, but you need to make sure you have, like, around 25 to 30 creatures, and no more than 30, because it will backfire. Yeah, that, that card can backfire. Honden is an old card that, it's useful when you have more Hondens, but it's decent. I've, I've never really been, uh, disappointed whenever it's on the field. It does cost 5 mana, though, so you're, uh, uh it's it's not cheap but it works um so let's see what else we got here cathartic reunion um generally half the time i've been stuck with like four or five legendary creatures in my hand and i've had no utility and it really blows generally people don't counter that because there's better and more to dangerous things to counter um but getting filling up your graveyard and getting things that are useful in your hand like prayers grass time of need or is it charm it's just more it's just crucial here's podium surprisingly it's card advantage but it's also a coat of arms for legendary creatures very powerful and it is by itself it can win games i got the foil variation because that's how much i love the card it's really good very strong um also, I completely forgot. Let's backtrack a sec here. Urn is Rune is Blast. Amazing for five mana. You exile anything that aren't legendary. Soul Rings. Dark Steel Ignits. Anything that is popular 
that uh, you need to get rid of. Psychonic Rift is by far the best board wipe because it doesn't affect yours. Um, but Urzinus Ruinous Blast is really, really strong. It's underpowered. Just like a Supreme Verdict, it's uncounterable. That's what makes this be uh, the best board wipe, in my opinion. People have to exile it off the stack or bounce it off the stack. Uh, Psychonic Rift, I still think, is the best board wipe simply because of you can do target non-land permanent that you don't control, or you can do all. Now, it's an instant. That's what makes it be the best, in my opinion. But people can still counter it. Now, this this is like a under. This is like a little bit of a gem, a hidden gem. But is it charm? Does everything that you need, except for hitting players directly. Uh, I got this bad boy foiled out because of how much I loved it. Counter target non creature spell. So it's almost like a spell pierce. Um, I don't know if there's anything like it that costs two mana, but you can counter something, draw something, or possibly shock something. You almost never need to do that unless you're trying to, you know, kill like a mother rune or something like that. Now, I needed something that was an actual counter spell as well as a stifle. And that's why disallow is in the deck. Double blue is really harsh because, mm, yeah, don't always have access to double blue. But countering something and countering an activated ability as well as triggered abilities, you sometimes need to do that. Um, it could be something simple as a Maze of Ith. You counter that and you can basically knock someone out of the game. Or somebody casts Rise of the Dark Realms. Yeah, that's a little hard. Um, occasionally, cards like Venser are utility where somebody tr you try to counter somebody and somebody says, yeah, no, screw that. And they try to counter your spell and then you bounce it off the stack with Venser and you recast to actually counter the original one. Shenanigans like that are amazing. Um, Beast Within is traditional. It's really good. It's also mono green. Uh, you need some variety when you're playing five colors. Because something like Iona, huh, you need to be prepared for cards like that where it just says, yeah, you're denied one color, so find a way around this. And you're like, yeah, sure, I'll just play Sakashima and copy that calling black. Uh, in case they're playing black white or black red. Because in general, there's always little things you need to watch out for. Um, so anyway, time of need. I think this bad boy went up to like $5 and $10, but it's a two-drop Demonic Tutor, and it's just as good, almost just as good as a Demonic Tutor, but the thing is, it's only for legendary creatures. It's got good flavor text, too. I like it, but in general, it's weaker because you can hit stuff like, oh, Beast Within, Disallow, Is the Charm, stuff like that. Now, this card did go up by a few dollars, but Praetor's Grasp just says... Ooh, I really want to play that, uh... Mmm, I want to play that Maze to Ith. I want to play your cards that you win with. Uh... Let me see here. Uh, what was that? Trample against creatures plus one, plus one, and, uh, Infect. And Trample. Ah, uh, whatever that card is. Anyway, you can play their win conditions and just win for them. You can play their Planeswalkers. Or you could simply deny them cards that they win with or want to have fun with. It's pretty evil. It's also face down when you exile it, so nobody but you knows. Karn Central Sundering is a new card that I've used twice, and it has sealed the game. It exiles itself, but the point is, A, you take an extra turn. B, you bounce something to your, their owner's hands, like, say, maybe uh, Venser. Um... Maelstrom Wanderer, so you can get some card advantages, or God forbid, one of like their generals or something that is really hard to get around, or a Swiftfoot Boots or a gr Lightning Graves that protect their general, so that way you can nuke it with something else. It's really strong, and it's very good, and it's appropriate at six mana. Also, not to mention you can tutor it with Captain Sisse, because it's legendary. And all their little odd bits here and there. Again, you want to go back to the basics and fix your mana up because without the proper mana, you can't do much of anything and you're going to have a useless deck. I have 
let my deck out to someone else. And they did a fantastic turn one with the Soul Ring and then sat there for the next six turns because they 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 didn't have the right mana and it was they hated it. It was miserable. It started off great, but without mana fixing, card fixing, uh scroll rack was amazing when I first built this deck, but I took it out because time and time again the card fixing just kept backfiring because you know, Scroll Rack just puts cards from your hand on top of your library. It really only works with Maelstrom Wander. I mean, <laughs> that's really about it. It's just, it's just the better the deck gets, the more the deck changes, the more the cards in the deck need to change as well. You need to have your decks to adapt to whatever you're trying to do. This is the multiplayer version, so... I had to tone it down and I had to make it more friendly. Cards like Swords to Plowshare, which is in here. It's you need you need utility, offensive cards, defensive cards, and in the mix, Beast Within, Godsend, they um, they fill certain slots. But you need to make sure you have different sources for card advantage to fill up your hands. Um, and since I play creature heavy, reanimation is really important. People love to blow my, my legendary stuff. Chroma's Memorial is a high target. Bounce Lands, they're not legendary. They're hard, high targets as well. Um, here's Podium. is a win con. It's a high target. And any of my legendary creatures like Yomiji, Sign of the Earth Dragon. Um, I had Intet the Dreamer in here because that was just straight repeatable card advantage. And that was beautiful. But I had to take it out because in the end it cost six mana and it's it just, it was just getting awkward. I'm sorry, it was just getting awkward and I had to make some cuts. But yeah, um, anything else? That's really about it. Get your mana base squared away, then your card advantage, and get the right creatures and the synergy will allow you to win games like, like, not like there's no tomorrow, but it'll allow you to win games in very impressive and very different ways. And that's what I love about it. It's just that every time I play my Legendary deck, it always plays differently. And it's a lot of fun. This has been my baby for the past five years. Ever since 2012. Well, that would be like six years at this point, but you know what I mean. All right.